You may or may not be familiar with the term pigeon superstition. It's a phrase that was derived from experiments in which pigeons were put into different situations in which they had to achieve food for themselves. Now, some of the situations involved food simply suspended from a ceiling with some items that the pigeon was left to move around until it could figure out how to step up onto them and use them to achieve the food itself. But other experiments were more human controlled, like putting the pigeon into a box with an automatic sliding door, revealing food that was attached to a timer. Now the door was set to go off periodically whenever the timer was set. But the pigeon of course wasn't aware of any timer or even sense of time intervals. So if the pigeon were to flap its wings and then the door opened because the timer went off, the pigeon would then associate its flapping of wings to the cause of the door opening, thus flapping its wings every time to achieve the food, even though its wing flapping had nothing to do with it. You admiring my uh, homemade tripod here in my completely empty gym? I'm using some pigeon superstition myself. I'm not using my normal bench and it threw me way off. In fact, midway through the workout, you'll see I actually switched to the other bench because that's my bench, even though they're both completely identical benches with the same barbells. I've simply had better workouts than the other bench, so I correlate that bench with a successful bench workout, and that's a perfect example of pigeon superstition. And we as humans adopt pigeon superstition into our daily lives all the time both in very obvious ways, in some minute ways we may not even be aware that we're even doing. Our lucky shirt, our lucky tank top, our lucky pair of underwear, our lucky necklace or wristband or ring that was passed down to us from a family member, all to have a good boxing match. We gotta wear this specific tie to have a good sales pitch at work or wear this lucky underwear to have a good squat day. Now it's quite obvious that there's no scientific connection there's no literal connection, there is literally no connection at all to your lucky underwear and your squat strength. However, at the same time, the human mind is quite a miraculous thing. It's capable of so much more strength than we ever give ourselves credit for. In fact, if you look at examples where impulse or adrenaline is the only factor, we can do some pretty amazing feats of strength. But as the human mind is conditioned, when we have time to think, thinking comes in and ruins it like a bad drug. Thinking is what will cause self-doubt. Thinking is the basis of the what-ifs in our head. It causes, us to, it causes us to second guess ourselves, to overthink. And then we end up psyching ourselves out, we get nervous, we lose confidence, and then we don't perform as well. So what's interesting is we know that the placebo effect is the best performance enhancing drug hands down. If we believe something's working, we'll physically manifest it and it's all in our heads. Well that's essentially what these pigeon superstitions are doing. Even though they don't physically, literally, or scientifically actually benefit our performance, the simple fact that we believe they do cancels out all self-doubt that we would normally have and allows us to perform better, which is quite interesting. So in that sense, these pigeon superstitions can be performing enhancing for sure, and they can actually be beneficial, not always a bad thing, because again, they're canceling out that self-doubt. Even though it's not the actual pigeon superstitions, it's completely our own minds, it is interesting that they do benefit us. However, they're not beneficial overall. In fact, I'd relate them more to morning coffee. Yes, that morning coffee will help you focus and get your work done much more efficiently. However, you end up relying on that morning coffee so much that should you ever miss it on a given morning, you're absolutely useless. In fact, your mind will focus on that lack of the coffee, that lack of your lucky underwear that you forgot to wear that day, so much to the fact that you'll ruin yourself mentally more than you would have without it. Because now you're not just self-doubting, now you're, you're fully, cognitively, doubting yourself because you don't have this thing. Without it, a rush of what-ifs come to your head before it even existed as pigeon superstition. But now that it is a pigeon superstition you rely on, the day you are without it, the day you are now focusing yourself and mentally damn yourself to a failure before you even began. Which is why I believe in natural strength. The best example is when I had tendonitis upon beginning weightlifting, I had to wear an elbow wrap for years. Once my tendonitis went away, 
I was so used to bench pressing in my elbow wrap that it ended up becoming a crutch and I related it to my strength. So I'd see a weight and I'd be like, wow, I can usually get this for six reps, but I don't have my wrap today, so I don't know if I can. And that's never a good thing. So I see these guys wearing wrist straps, elbow sleeves, a weightlifting belt, Olympic lifting shoes just to do a bench press when none of that is needed. And then you catch them without their gear or they forget something and suddenly they're stuck. They can't lift the full performance. So my advice is be aware of your pigeon superstitions and just identify them and slowly get rid of them and put all of the mental confidence into your own naked strength. Oh, oh, hey, Dallas. Hey, hey Dallas, Texas. I'm going to see you guys in like two and a half weeks because on May 9th and 10th, I'm going to the Dallas Europa. It's May 9th and 10th. It's a Friday and Saturday. If you don't know the exact location, Google it, because it's like the fourth biggest fitness event in the United States. So if you're in Dallas, Texas, or anywhere near there, make the trip down and come and see me. I'm going to be in the big old Isatory booth, but once again, because I'm not sponsored by Isatory or anything like that, I'm going to be there repping NWB. So I'm going to have all NWB lifestyle gear there, my own little table, but it'll be in the Ice Tour booth because they're a cool ass team to work alongside with. And of course, you know, I'll be repping them gear wise because I do love them. But the bottom line is I'm going to be there with Ice Tour, May 9th and 10th. So please come and see me. Question for y'all. What do you do personally, you, when you see somebody in the gym using really bad form, but you know it's just out of inexperience. Okay, what I mean is, of course you're gonna have the douchebag big guys that come in there, I'm sure we've all been that guy at one point or another, I know I have, who are in there pushing a heavy ass weight, maybe ego lifting, or maybe not ego lifting, maybe just trying to power lift, but it's just too much weight for them and they're starting to use sloppy form. That's, that's one thing, okay? Those guys know what they're doing, they know they're cheating themselves, whatever, let them do that. But I'm talking about, you know, maybe like the young lifter, the high school or college kid who you can tell is fairly new at lifting, or maybe they're even older than that, but you can tell that they're kind of newer to lifting, and they're doing something you can tell is just inexperienced. Like, I saw a kid that was squatting today, and, um, he, overall, he had good technique as far as, like, his, his back was neutral, you know, you could see, like, his knees were straight, activated, but the thing was, he was, he was only going down halfway. Like, it was like, if this is, this is his quads, they're only going down to, like, here. It was like a total quarter squat, like, it was, it was horrible. And part of it, you can see his mobility, because you can see his, his heels wanting to rise up, so, you know, squat shoes or sliding plates underneath his heels would have helped that, but the thing is... I didn't really want to approach him. I didn't really know what to do. I wanted to approach him and help him and like just kindly and politely and humbly try to offer him some help because he was going up to like 225. I saw him 135, 185, 225, but his form was just quarter squats. And he kept trying to put on more and more weight. But the thing is like, I feel like, I feel like nobody in the gym wants to be told how to lift. Even if it's in the most humble, passive, only trying to help way possible. I feel like just nobody wants to hear it. That you're probably already into it in your head. You're probably, he's probably doing those squats like, hell yeah, who good ass set. That was an awesome set. I'm getting fired up. And then I just come over here and ran on his parade. Hey, those squats suck. Here's how you fix them. I wouldn't say it like that, but I feel like that's how people take it. So my question is, when you see somebody doing bad form, do you go up and, and politely try to correct them? Or do you go up and insultingly correct them? Or do you just let it go? Me personally, I believe nobody wants to be corrected while in the gym, as beneficial as it may be to them. So I just leave it alone. I just keep my mouth shut. But what do you guys do? I know Scott Herman used to go up and help correct people in the gym and all that, and he had success with it. So just curious to see what you guys do, what your approach is on that. Shout out to Oakland Beach. If any of my war people live in Oakland Beach, shout out to y'all. Get your locks picked, run up in your spot, mass and glove shit. Queens niggas involved with thug shit, you get lumped it. Put it with you in the bath. Buy a t-shirt, nwblifestyle.com in the info box below. Tank tops, t-shirts, hoodies, dog tags, you name it. Support and represent the lifestyle you live. Hey.